What's going on everybody? Welcome to T3G and today we're doing a budget build video. Cerebro's in the background. He's just going to be doing his thing while I talk about my budget build. We just recently did a uh, comparison between a pre-built system versus a self-built system, if it's worth it, if it's not. And that pre-built system was right around $3,200. So I figure why not since we already did that let's set our budget at $3,200 and I will give you my opinion on what I would get if I had the money to spend $3,200 on a system uh, of course mine is gonna be self-built I'm not doing no pre-built stuff so if I'm spending $3,200 let's get right into it once again I do want to point this out we're probably not gonna agree on this you guys have your opinions on what you want or you might not agree on why I got certain things or that I don't need certain things. The thing is, is if I'm spending $3,200, this is what I'm going to get. You can take this as advice or you can just look at it as like, okay, this is what that person would get. I wouldn't do that. But either way, once again, this is $3,200 budget build and this is what I would get if I had that budget. So let's get right into it. First things first, of course, the case. Uh, there's a few options that I was looking at, especially at $3,200. We have the Lee & Lee PC case here. It's the all black full tower. It's kind of like um, like a square almost. It's not a full tall full tower. It's actually more of a square, so it has a lot of room in the back and in the front where the motherboard is. So I like that personally, and I'll explain well, I'll explain right now. The reason I like it is because you get to put the hard drives and all your cables and your power supply all in the back so where you can't see it in the front. So that way the front actually looks really, really clean. Now the reason I like the Lee & Lee case is because it has a lot of fans. So I don't do custom liquid loops. I do. Uh, I will get a liquid cooling system for the CPU, a close, uh, an enclosed system, a self-sustaining one, uh, most likely from Corsair. So when I go that route, I want to also have fans that can cool out the other things. So that's why I went with this one because it has a lot of fan room and also the option to use a uh, radiator system for a um, self-sustaining uh, liquid cooling. So that's why I went with this. Now, I was also thinking of Case Labs. Case Labs is another company you can go with. They have these kind of options. The only reason I kind of went with this is because with Case Labs, you get to modify everything you want. And the only problem is, is when you go to Case Labs' website and you start choosing the certain things that might you might want or might not, certain descriptions don't really tell you what it actually is gonna be. So like you, you get to pick the option, but you don't actually get to see where what that actually looks like on the case and they're not very well described so that's why I went with something that's already built and sold as is so that's why I went with the Lee and Lee $399.99 on Muick I will say this I didn't go all from one retailer I did go to multiple sources for my stuff uh, but nonetheless it'll all equal out to 3200 the motherboard that I went with was the MSI X99A SLI Plus 2011 version 3 motherboard. It's for the new 2011 socket. So yes, we are going to be using a 2011 uh, CPU, 2011 socket CPU, the new ones. But that being said, the reason I went with this motherboard, one, we here at T3G really like MSI. So far, we've had no issues with our MSI products, unlike ASUS. So, <laughs> right? <laughs> So that being said, I went with the MSI, can't go wrong. It's got everything I want. It's got multiple PCIe ports. It's got, I believe, 10, 2468, eight or 10 SATA ports, which is perfect uh, because I like to have a lot of internal drives. And it also has, of course, USB 3.0 and a bunch of other small features here and there that I like. Uh, so that's why I went with this plus it's all black which I really liked that way then you kind of have more freedom to play with the color scheme if, you, if that's something that you're into of course so going from that I'm gonna go skip to the CPU I did the i7-5930 the reason I did the 5930 is because the 5820 does have some restrictions with the PCI lanes that it has so if you are looking at some point to do SLI 
and you want to do more than two cards that will the that cpu will restrict that performance so i went with the 5930 if for some weird reason i choose to go that route and i believe the cache on it uh the l3 cache on it i believe is a little better on this one as well so the 5930 I'd rather pay five hundred dollars than a thousand dollars for the fifty nine sixty. That just doesn't make sense to me. I will never buy a thousand dollar component for a computer. So that means a single GPU or a single CPU. It would not happen. Not for me. Other people have their own opinion. I would not. Going to the memory, I did G Skill Ripjaw. The reason I did the G Skill Ripjaw. There are other ones that you can get that are less money at the current moment. I did these because basically of the color scheme it's all black besides the little bit that's on the side there which you really wouldn't see if you're looking from the top at the motherboard so that's why i went with this it's uh 32 gigs now this is where we in the beginning i said you might not agree with me some people don't think 32 gigs is necessary here's the thing if i'm building a system at 3000 or plus then i want to future proof it i want to make sure for at least the next three four years i don't have to worry about this system and if you honestly believe that 8 gigs still till this day is enough, I disagree with you wholeheartedly. So I, you know, we've we've already proven to ourselves, Cerebro can attest to this, that 8 gigs is just not sufficient anymore. Uh, 16 gigs will obviously would be plenty, but why not go a little more and get the 32 gigs? So I have 32 gigs here, 2800 megahertz, so really fast RAM, DDR4. Uh, it's it's just it's going to give you the great performance gsco is a great company they have been for a very long time now and uh, you really can't go wrong there like i said there are other ddr4 2800 megahertz 32 gig rams that are less money i think some of them are like 190 200 but the reason i went with this one is because it had the more of a color scheme that i would have wanted i know it's weird to pay more money for the color screen but that's what i went with moving on the video card i went with is the evga 980ti as i mentioned i will not ever get like a titan x i don't want to pay a thousand dollars for a single card this is almost virtually the same performance as the titan but it's almost half the price and like i said virtually the same performance yes the titan is just a little better but depending on what you're doing you're almost never going to realize that performance difference um so i went with a single one 980 ti there might it, you know if later on this falls in the 3200 budget if for some reason i would ever want to expand then i can always get a second one and we're good to go from there so that being said the next thing here is the power supply what's going to power all this i went with the corsair rm 1000 thousand watt power supply from corsair 80 place gold certified fully modular I mean it's Corsair guys it's I can't really say anything else they're great at their RAM they're great at their power supplies they're great at their SSDs they're great with their cases although some people you know will say certain cases of theirs might need some improvement but that being said they do a great job so that's what we went for the power supply I went with a M.2 SATA Samsung 850 Evo 500 gigabyte hard drive because the MSI board does have an M.2 SATA port, I went with this. This way I can have an SSD without taking up a hard drive slot. Even though I have plenty of hard drive slots in that case, this way is just one thing that's capable of going right onto the motherboard. I went with another Samsung Evo 500 gigabyte SSD. Actually, I went with two of these. So I have, I like to split them up. One I would use for video games. The one that's the M.2 SATA port, I would use that mainly for more soft, uh, some for the OS and s most of my uh, consistently used software. And then the other 500 gig, I would uh, limit to, you know, possibly doing some other software that maybe I don't use as much, but still want good performance when I'm trying to use it. Then I went with to cool the CPU and I will be overclocking it. I went with the Corsair Hydro Series H100i GTX liquid cooler. It's $112. There are a lot of different versions of this um, Corsair liquid cooling system. You have the H100, H110. Um, actually, it says it all right there H105, H110, H110i. Um, 
and I believe that's all the ones that are the 250 reds. So you have a bunch of different versions. I went with the H100i. Uh, personally, I might even consider the H110i. I think it's a newer model, it's a little better. Either way, you can't go wrong. It's liquid cooling for your CPU, especially if you're looking to overclock. The thing with the 2011 socket CPUs is they run at 3.5 gigahertz or 3.2 or 3.6, somewhere around there. Uh, you can easily overclock these to 4 gigahertz or even 4.2, but I always and everybody else recommends liquid cooling. You can go with a heat sink, a really big heat sink. I just don't like to install that big of a heat sink onto my motherboard, so I just went with the liquid cooling option. And the last thing on here is the Toshiba 4 terabyte um, that we were talking about actually in the previous video. It's the Toshiba 4 terabyte mechanical hard drive for mass storage. So basically anything else that I want on here, I can throw it on here for storage. I can throw on if I, I like to install almost all my Steam games. And right now I have two terabytes worth of Steam games. I know I don't need to install all of them, especially if I'm not playing them, but that's something I do do. So the four terabyte will work very well with that. And the Toshiba one, it's 128 megabyte cache. So it's actually a very, very, very good performance for a 7200 RPM drive. And I believe, oh, and Windows 10, of course. I went with uh, Windows 10 Pro 64 bit. Gotta have a Windows system. I didn't put an optical drive in. It's 20 bucks for an optical drive. Uh, if you don't want Blu-ray, if you want Blu-ray and a Blu-ray, not just a player, but a burner as well, those are about $60, so you can add that to your price. I didn't add that, but that's basically what I would go with, and the total ends up being $3,134.87, so right a little bit under the 3200 mark. Actually, if you add the Blu-ray burner, you'd probably be right at the 3200 mark. So, yeah, that's that's what I would go with, guys. I know we're all going to... I know in the comments you're going to be like, oh, you don't need 32 gigs of RAM, you don't need that much storage. It all depends what you're doing and what you're expecting to do in the future. This this is what I would do with $3,200 if I was building a system. Like I said, there's certain things. Everything here is what I would do. This is not necessarily what everybody would do. So take that too. You know What you might consider doing with $3,200 for building a system is not some, but something somebody else would do. Or even right here in this room, me and Cerebro wouldn't necessarily agree on the same case or the same power supply or even the same card, any of that stuff. So, you know, take it, take it uh, easy in the comments because once again, not everybody's gonna have the same opinions on what to spend it on. But I think overall, this is gonna be a beast. If you spend $3,200 on this system, this will last you easily for a very long time. The GeForce GTX 980 Ti has six gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. It's the performance on this thing is absolutely amazing. Even at 1440 and at 4K, it's not bad. But you know what? Personally, I wouldn't game at the current moment at 4K. There's not a lot of things out there that can. I like 60 FPS or higher. As soon as it drops under 60 FPS, I know people say your your eye can't read more than 30 FPS, but I notice a difference when it drops under that 60 FPS. So this will definitely play at 1440 at 60 FPS with the CPU that you have, plus if you overclock it with the RAM, everything. Gaming wise, production wise, we do create videos, renders. So this is what I would use that for, obviously, especially with having a, um, having a uh, 2011 socket CPU. I mean, that's what those things were built for. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. 31, 34, 87 is my total. It's just under $3,200. This is what I would do. So if you saw our video where we compared the uh, pre-built versus uh, DIY builds or self-builds, that system was 3179.99 that had an AMD CPU in it. And I believe this is a much better system. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my opinion. Leave a comment down below telling us what you might get, what you might not get, what you think you would get differently from this. Uh, but be kind, don't insult each other. Everybody has their own thing they would do. And that's it, guys. Stay tuned for more videos, and we'll see you guys in the next one.